Hey guys, so I was waiting on a friend so that we can walk a neighborhood today. Um, so I was like, while I wait on her, I might as well come talk to you guys and do the last video for realestateisabitch.com. Um, so one thing that I wanted to talk about today was the high price market. So the market is a little <laughs> overpriced. I've never seen it like this. Um, but for some reason or another, we're able to afford it. So I'm not saying that it's a bad market or it's a good market, but we're able to afford it. So that says a lot. We're not in a recession. People are trying to recover. Interest rates are very low. Um, it doesn't mean that it might be a good time for everybody to purchase. I will say if you are a seller, I, I was always taught if you have something to sell, you sell it. <laughs> so, um, even if you have to sell and rent for a year to see what the market is going to do, or if you have to sell and repurchase to purchase your dream home, whatever the case may be, it is a seller's market. Um, for those who don't know what that means, that means that homes on the market, it's not a lot of homes on the market. So sellers are able to sell their home at whatever price they want because the market is in high demand for sellers. So um that's something to think about i also wanted to share with realtors um and clients also if you have a three hundred thousand dollar limit let's say you got approved for three hundred thousand dollars that doesn't mean you have to use that for three hundred thousand dollars you know don't go house poor you still want to take vacations you still want to drive a a, a good car you know there are expenses that come with purchasing a home so don't go house poor getting approved for $300,000 and not calculating the other expenses that come with that. Um, also for realtors, when you're taking your clients house shopping and they are approved for $300,000, let's say, you should be looking at homes that are priced at $270,000, $280,000 because you're having to outbid all the other buyers. So if you're taking them shopping what they're approved at how can you outbid you in that case they're going to have to bring additional money to closing or ask their lender for more money um in their pre-approval so also calculate that be smart with your investment don't just buy anything i know a lot of people are eager to get into the business so they're buying any investment they're not understanding the numbers or what's going into it and this is for realtors this is for um, investors wholesalers um, anybody who's looking into looking to get into the game of real estate don't just buy anything um, make sure it is an investment because one deal can set you up for life or one deal can make you very wealthy <laughs> so you never know you never know until you actually learn the game of investing however there's different methods um, for purchasing your dream home purchasing investment property and purchasing a home just because you need to get out of renting don't think that your first home is going to be your dream home your first home is put in place so that you can have that equity to purchase your dream home once you sell your first home so don't be too hard on yourself in this market um, because i know it is a very intimidating market it is challenging you don't have the opportunity to sleep on your deals anymore it's either do you want it or not like that's it plain and simple do you want the property or do you not and you have to make a decision right then and there some i know my clients if they're really into a home i submit the offer i submit the offer without them even even seeing the home and if it's approved then we go out we visit the home but right now you don't really have that you don't have that freedom because everything is so in high demand so just listen to your realtor if your realtor is educated and smart um, then you should trust them and let them do their job because this is what we do this is why we're licensed this is why we go to school this is why we have continuing education classes so I just want to come and drop that information to you guys um, because real estate is a bitch. And if you don't know the game, then let an expertise handle it for you um, because it can be very, very intimidating. So something that just came to mind 
when we were finishing up our walk and I was like, dang, I need to share that with them. Um, so my home shopping experience in Georgia, it was a pretty good house shopping experience. Um, I was just freshly licensed in Georgia. So I was only licensed like two or three months, but I knew I wanted to purchase my dream home in the state. So I represented myself. I was my own agent and I wasn't house shopping on the market long at all. I only looked at three homes before I came across my home and I only lost two other offers before I came across my dream home. And I don't even remember what those other homes were that I placed offers on. So I don't even think they were for me because I can't even remember the layout or the location or anything. So long story short, I came across my home, I put an offer in on it, and I lost the offer to an all-cash offer. Someone must have loved the home just as much as I did because they put an all-cash offer that they were going to close in seven days. Whatever happened, I'm not sure. Something didn't go right, but they didn't close. So I stay on this home, and even with my clients, if I see a home that is pending too long on the market... I reach out to the agent. Hey, I have a client that's really interested in, in this home. Are you going to sell? And I have closed a lot of deals by just simply reaching out to homes that were pending and asking the agent, is this is this deal going to go through? So I took that same method and I did it with the dream home that I purchased. I reached out to the agent. She explained to me, you know, <laughs> we have an all cash offer, but these sell these buyers are really being pushy because they have all cash and they're going to close um, soon so they feel like they want everything their way that's what she told me and I understand that because people who pay cash they feel like they have the upper hand and that the seller should listen to them but that's not always the case um, so for whatever reason the sellers didn't end up going with that cash offer and they backed away, but I had reached out to her. I was like, hey, I'm really interested in this home. It's not a cash offer that I'm submitting, but I'm sure I can get it closed in three weeks. She reached out to me. She said, if we don't have a closing date by Friday, I will let you know um, because they're being very pushy because they're bringing cash to the table. I'm like, okay, I prayed about it. I didn't worry about it. I still was looking at homes on the MLS. She called me that Friday evening, asked me, was I still interested? Of course, I said, yes, I dropped my earnest money off and I was able to get the home and here I am today. So it just goes to show as a realtor, you have to go beyond for your clients because this market is so tight. You have to get out there and do the extra legwork and you have to know how to write strong strategic offers in order to win the bid, you are competing with multiple buyers. So if you do not know how to write a solid, strong offer, you need to talk back to your managing broker, someone to help you um, be a little more skilled in sales or someone to help you learn the sales approach because real estate is sales. If you don't know how to sell it, to win it for your clients, you're going to be driving with your hair cut, with your head cut off like a duck because this market you're not going to win. So take some time and study, be an expertise, work smarter, don't work harder. Um real estate is a bitch. But yeah, I just want to share that back end part for you guys. I will see you on the next video. Um, if you are enjoying these, let me know, slide in my DMs, give me a thumb up, leave me a comment, write me on Instagram, females who flip, and I'll talk to y'all later.